Hello, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to HoloLens 2, Volume 2. I'll be reviewing the research mode, which is in preview today. I'm not going to be able to show you the four visible light cameras, but I will be able to show you the accelerometer, the gyroscope, and magnetometer. This is the HoloLens 1. This is the computer vision stream for the short throw and the long throw uh, depth for the time of flight vertical cavity surface emitting laser and the long throw camera which is used to go out and volumetrically and semantically understand your environment and, and mesh and put all those triangles together so you understand you know where you can put digital content into the real world so this new research mode should be available in just a few days but you can go into the online uh, HoloLens application or you can put it right into your browser um, with your IP address and I'll walk you through how to do that step for step and how to enable the developer option on the HoloLens too, which you have to actually go into the developer mode, into settings, and then you have to go into uh, the, the browser itself and enable the sensor streams so you can pull some of this information out there. It's gonna be very similar, albeit almost identical, except when you compare the different resolutions and frame rates from the Azure V3, which is in this device, to the Azure V4, which I showcased in volume one. So let's go ahead and go into uh, the application for research mode, and then I'll review the user in interactions or the UI uh, for the HoloLens 2. And I'll also go into um, the Insider Edition, the preview, what those things, or what the differences are between beta and various others. And I'll also show you a real-time eye tracking uh, uh, calibration in real time. Thank you. Let's jump in. Hello and welcome back and let's review the UI real quick. So the HoloLens 2 is a little bit different than the HoloLens 1. We use the bloom function all the time to jump into the menu on the HoloLens 1 spatial computer. On this particular device it depends what hand you have up and it should essentially have this little Microsoft uh, menu that's floating just underneath your wrist and you use your finger to bring that up and you can use your finger to bring it back down I'm not the biggest fan of this user interaction number one mainly for disabled veterans or other disabled individuals that you know don't have access to either their left or right hand or both but you can use Cortana to circumvent this this minor issue so let's go back in and just we're gonna start initial initializing the developer mode by going into the device portal so you'll go into settings and at the bottom, you'll go into update and security. And as soon as that comes up, you'll go into this developer uh, menu button here. And at the bottom of this, you're going to see a device portal. You want that to be selected on. Okay, that needs to be enabled. Once you have that, you'll go back in to your network and internet, and you're going to find your IP address. The reason this is important because you're going to access the HoloLens 2 research mode either through your browser or through the Microsoft application. So once you have the IP address, you're going to enter HTTPS um, and then backslash backslash your IP address and enter. You can either reset your credentials. It'll set a pin over to the HoloLens 2 and then you can connect. That's actually what you see behind me on this particular device. So as we start to log into the system, we've already set up an enabled device portal and then we, we found our IP address with the username, pin, password, and resetting the credentials. And you have to enable the allow sensor streams in the system recording mode. Once you do that, you can access the accelerometer, the gyroscope, the magnetometer, a lot of the things we did not have access to in the original HoloLens is very, very useful uh, for the system. But before I jump into that, I wanted to go into the insider previews for the software system. So there's a lot of questions about Windows Insider programs for the, the HoloLens 2. Uh, there was a, a, a problematic issue where if you upgraded uh, to an Insider preview on the DAB or beta channel and then you, you reset it back, it bricked the machine, you had to reset it. I believe that's still an issue, so it's something you should be aware of. But the few differences here, once you select it started, it's going to ask you whether or not you want to select a dev channel, which is really uh, right for certain types of highly technical users. Let's get this out of here. Yeah. And then we also, the, the difference between dev and beta channel is the dev is really unsupported. It's unstable. Um, it can crash quite a bit. The beta channel is supported by uh, Microsoft, and that's generally the one that I have for the Windows Insider program. Okay? So what we want to do next, essentially, is come into the HoloLens streamer, and I'm going to essentially disable this right here, and then we'll jump back into the system. Okay, once you have all that set up in accordance with manufacturer guidelines and specifications, you can actually see in here, this is a 3D active tracking module for the 3D view inside the, uh, the browser. Um, for the Windows device portal and you can see this you can you're looking at the floor You're actually seeing it from my headset and you can update the spatial mapping You can show the mesh you can look at the the, the different types of spatial anchors 
But what I wanted to showcase to you guys is actually on the bottom of this device. So what you can see down here is the, the, the origin translation vector from the headset. Um, and, and then you also see the IJK uh, for the head rotation quaternions. And we've talked about quaternions before. Now, now these are generally represented as A plus BI plus CJ plus DK, IJK. Um, and a quaternion is like a, a pure mathematical symptom, uh, a mathematical sy system for complex numbers, right? It's used in all kinds of robotics applications, especially calculations where we're looking at three-dimensional rotations in, in certain types of graphics, hand tracking, computer vision, texture analysis. Um, and, in robotics, we usually do Euler angles to a quaternion, um, you know, uh, multiplication tables. Uh, so it's very, very important. But this is helpful because we didn't have this information via the accelerometer, the gyroscope, and magnetometer on the HoloLens 1 computer vision streams. So once you activate that in the system, which I showed you for enabling the sensor stream information, you get all this information, raw data, which you can then integrate into your, uh, you know, specific application, which has tremendous importance, it's vital importance, if you're developing certain types of applications where you have a very small error rate or deviation that you have to stay within, right? It's incredibly important. But we can also look at various different kinds of things here. So I wanted to show you the first person view so I can kind of kick that out so you can see where I'm looking in this simulated environment from that, from that headset. Uh, we're gonna force the visual tracking here and then what I'm gonna do now you can see the stabilization plane for the headset itself so it doesn't get lost if you move way too quickly. Um, and then now what we'll do is we'll update the spatial mapping so you can see this in real time. So again, this is using the long thrower Azure, Azure V4 um, vertical capping surface emitting time of flight sensor to map everything around me in real time. And then what we want to do is zoom out so we can actually see uh, my entire environment, my little bat cave down here in real time. And it has around 138,000 uh, triangles or vertices and 55 volumes. So that's really uh, an improvement on the original volumetric capture system for the HoloLens 1. Um, I can't wait to continue to dive into some of these systems and to showcase them to you guys. So you understand how to, to utilize them in an advanced notion, but also in a simpler format so it isn't so complex when you're attempting to review all these technical uh, documents that Microsoft puts out there and all these other developers out there in the world. Again, we want to simplify these processes so anyone, anyone can dive into a spatial computer and, and begin to understand all the different types of systems that are integrated into this unbelievably beautiful and advanced spatial computing system. Okay, so next what I wanted to showcase to you guys in this volume two was also the eye calibration. Now, I, I went over some of the eye hotspots yesterday and integrating eye calibration with UI menus, but what I didn't talk about was glint differencing via the infrared cameras that they're using to create that 3D model and also the 98% iris recognition. So I'm going to do that via first person point of view and I'll show you guys what the eye calibration is doing in real time um, and because it's also automatically calibrating your IPD measurement via the vertical uh, pixels on this uh, the diffractive waveguide system. So let's jump into the eye calibration so I can show you guys that in real time. Awesome, let's go. All right, we're jumping into the eye calibration in real time so I can showcase to this to you guys so you can see Make sure the what that is glint differencing via infrared and is and the iris so recognition for automatic corners. login. So it's going to make sure that the visor is pushed down fully and in so you can see all four corners. Next, it is. let's adjust your HoloLens for it your is. eyes. Now, and head, hold your, hold your head, head steady and follow the gems with your eyes. Focus in the middle there. It's going to move up to the upper right. Down in the middle. Think about that, 98% accurate for iris recognition, so it automatically logs you in when you first log into the HoloLens. I think that's just wonderful. It's really a nice advancement and integration into the UI system, so you're not constantly using your hand. Adjusting your device for my eyes. Oh, and it's calibrated. What a wonderful and very seamless experience to automatically calibrate the system. You can do this every single time somebody else uses a device. So it is calibrated for their eyes, for their IPD, for their head, and all those other ergonomic metrics that they work so hard to streamline. Uh, thank you guys so much. Again, I talked very briefly about the UI, um, and, but, but overall, I think there's a lot of different improvements that they've made and they'll continue to make on the, the user interaction experience for this system. Obviously, Cortana and the voice recognition system is going to be a, a, a massive 
integration element into a lot of these things. But uh, I can't wait to continue to showcase this to you guys in further videos. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day.